Okay, well today we're going to do something different. Uh, the other day I was browsing YouTube and stumbled across a Blender video that uses geometry nodes, which appears to be Blender's kind of answer to MoGraph. And so what I thought would be fun to do is take something that was done in Blender and see how we can recreate it in Cinema 4D using MoGraph. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so this video was by Chong3D, uh, and you can actually download the assets here. Uh, it is through Gumroad. Definitely recommend um, throwing a few dollars his way since, um, you know, you can get some really nice looking kind of low poly uh, 3D assets. But here's the effect we're going for here. Kind of a, um, a transforming effect, uh, very MoGraph-like, Cinema 4D MoGraph-like where, you know, it kind of pops up, it appears, and then it disappears and kind of goes to a helicopter. So that's what we're going to try and do. Uh, now, I do want to point out this is not going to be the exact same. Um, I'm going to show you kind of the basic approach. And if you wanted to take it further, uh, you absolutely can. But looking at the video and kind of breaking down um, what he's actually doing, uh, how what properties he's using, position, scale, a little bit of rotation as well, I think, um, and then kind of incorporating that back into Cinema 4D and MoGraph is how I would approach this. And it's kind of what we're going to be doing here, but just on a little bit of a, a simpler kind of scale since that's uh, what I like to do with this channel. So let's dive into C Cinema 4D. Okay, cool. And here's going to be the end result. So wanted to show you guys what we end up with before we kind of delete it and get going. Now the helicopter started doing something a little bit strange here. Um, so I'm not too concerned about that, uh, but you know, really it's broken down into two different parts here where, um, the Jeep appears and then we essentially do the opposite of that, uh, to get the helicopter to appear. And yeah, it's doing this weird thing where it's freaking out on kind of the first frame here, but we'll try and see if we can't do something about that. So to start this over, I'm just going to delete all my effectors, uh, thereby just kind of leaving me with my um, <laughs> my uh, geometry. And you can see the helicopter just does not want to play along here, but uh, just turning the fracture on and off seems to fix it. Um, I did kind of organize these assets, so they are a little bit different than what you would see if you were to import them. Um, I should also mention that I did have to uh, open the assets in Blender before saving them out as like an OBJ or FBX to bring them into uh, Cinema. So um, let's actually start with the Jeep and we'll make that Jeep appear, okay? So here we go, everything's already in a fracture and because the pieces are in there individually, I don't need to change my mode here. Let's actually get rid of this. And now in the video, what I noticed is that there's several different motions going on here with the Jeep when it appears in that it's kind of moves, moving up and then back down. It's overshooting kind of the ground and then coming to rest, you know, on the ground like that. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, and while we could do this all in one effector, uh, we're gonna get something a little bit closer if we use two effectors uh, to achieve this. So with my fracture object selected, I'll come here to my effectors and choose plane. And this is going to be um, our Y position. So we'll just type in plane for position. And this is just gonna be the, the effector that gets it to kind of move up and down a little bit. So I do want some movement on the um, Y, but because the way this was brought in, it's actually not the Y we want, um, it's the Z that's making this go up and down. Okay, so we'll maybe do 20 centimeters or so, negative 20, I guess. All right, something like that. And now we can create our field. Uh, and we don't want to use a linear field for this because what will end up happening here uh, is it's just going to move it all up or down, depending which direction we move this. And that's not what we want. We want it to go up and then come back down. So rather than a linear field, um, I can use one of my other shapes like box, capsule, cylinder, even sphere. But I'll go with a box so that the way this works now, I'm going to get rid of that linear field is it'll move up when it's inside and then come back down once it goes outside, okay? So, you know, in case you're a little new to effectors, um, we are telling the effector what we want it to do to our geometry in the parameter tab. This field controls the strength of the effector. 
And so outside of the, the outer box here is 0% strength. Once it starts getting inside, it's gonna increase the strength until once it's inside the inner box or cube here, that it will be 100%. So think of this as 0% strength and 100% strength. And we kind of have a gradient in between here. Uh, and so as I move this, we can see it goes up and down. So that's kind of the first part of this is now to just animate this moving up and down. So I'll keyframe the Z position, hit frame zero, go to say frame yeah, maybe 30, move this through and keyframe it again. So that now when I play this back, you can see we get that little bit of overshoot. Now this still looks kind of boring and plain, not very appealing. Uh, and a big part of that is going to be the remapping here, um, specifically the contour. Now quadratic will give us a simplified way to kind of speed this up a little bit, smooth it out a little, depending which direction we go. And that's looking okay. I may actually wanna make the inner offset a little bit, let's see, play, let's play with this value a little bit, a little bit smaller. Yeah, I kind of like that. And then the last thing I'm gonna do to give this a little bit more um, personality and character is to add the delay modifier layer. And while the smooth actually looks pretty good, really just adding a little bit more of an ease in, ease out on this, um, I want to use the spring blending mode. Now, right now it's only kind of springing in one direction, why, which is why it looks a little bit strange. If I turn off um, this enable um, clipping or clamping, I should say, then we will get a little bit more of a smooth effect. Now that's probably a bit too strong. So I'll put that to say 10%. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, the only thing I want to do now, or what we need to do now is to add the, the appearing or disappearing, because really you can go either way with this. And it's super easy to just kind of, um, you know, switch it. Uh, we would switch what this is doing by coming into our field and you can just hit invert. So now instead of it um, going down and then up and then down, it's going up or um, down, up, down. So invert will allow us to do the opposite really quick. Um, and we're gonna need another effector to, to make this appear to, to help give us the look we want. Um, so I'm gonna create another plane effector with my Jeep selected. This will be my plane scale. And then from here, I'm gonna go into my parameter tab, choose scale, uniform scale, set this to negative one, which will make this disappear. I'll then choose my linear field is that once I rotate it, right? Or I could have also just changed the direction right in there, will allow me to get this to appear or disappear. Now, I think I forgot to turn off my position, which is why I was kind of moving back like that, but you can see we now get that scale. So we, can, we could animate this separately, or, or we can just kind of position it where we like inside of our box field here, and then parent the linear field to the box field, because uh, the fields actually don't need to be associated with the, the effectors or, or parented to them. It only matters if they're in the list here. So as long as a field is in this list, it does not matter if it's, you know, um, parented or whatever. It can be anywhere else in your object manager. So now we end up with something like this, All right? So that's looking pretty good. Okay, and we can play around a bit with the position of this linear field. Do we want the, the scale to happen a little bit later? All right, what, do we want it to happen earlier if we move it forward? All right, um, honestly, kind of liked it where it was in the middle there. Uh, but the last thing we want to do in the remapping is, I'm sorry, with our field is to adjust the remapping by setting this to, um, once again, quadratic, or if you prefer something like curve, you can do that as well. But this maybe we'll do a little bit negative here to, to help kind of ramp up that scale a little. So great, that's looking pretty good. Okay, I actually may make the linear field just a little bit narrower. Oops, that kind of backfired on me. Let's pause this. Now make it a little bit smaller. There we go. 
I like that just a bit more. Um, and that's pretty much it for this one. Okay, now once again, I could have done everything in my linear field here. And we can see that if I turn off my um, plane effector that's for my position, come into my scale one, turn on position, and then kind of set the value for the Z, what we did before, which I think was negative 20. So now we have this linear field controlling both position and scale. And it doesn't look quite as good because we don't have as much control. We don't have the overshoot. Uh, we could add a another delay here to kind of help with this. Um, but it's still not going to look as um, good because we're trying, we're trying to do everything with just one field. And um, as opposed to having them be a little bit offset, having the timing and values be a little different. Um, you know, we're also not getting the movement up and then down. Technically, for the up and down, you could go into a linear field. Um, you could set this to curve and try to get it um, to use this to help with that. I've had not great success there, but that is something you could experiment with um, to get something similar. So that's how you could do this all in one if you wanted something a little bit simpler. But that is not what I want here. So let's see, have I undone enough yet? No, I have not. I think that's about right. Great. So that's how we could make something, dis um, I'm sorry, up here to disappear. It's essentially the opposite, right? I said you could just come in here, um, select the field, all right, go into remapping and check invert. And so now we have this disappearing instead of appearing. <laughs> and I'm getting the same issue where it's, you know, freaking out at the very beginning. So I wonder if it's because of this invert checkbox. I'm not certain, but that's really all you would do is just kind of do the same thing, except in your scale effector, um, you could just rotate it, okay? So have it do the opposite by just rotating it. Let's see if that gives me oops, the same, same problem. Yep. So therein lies the problem, something with that. But you can see that's what we pretty much had before. Okay, so I guess I can go through the helicopter now. But honestly, I'm just going to duplicate what, what I did before. So I'm going to duplicate both of these, move them down here. These are for my helicopter, this is why naming is important. Okay, and select my helicopter, do the position first, then the scale. That could potentially also be one of the issues here is the order of um, operations uh, with this. So helicopter now is kind of showing up. Uh, now we need to check our fields, make sure they are kind of working right. We've moved them far enough. Turns out we have not moved the field far enough for our helicopter. So we'll go to frame 30, move this through, and that should be good enough. Um, I think we're just running into an issue with our um, delay. And the delay can cause some weird issues, so it's not a bad idea to just turn those on or off um, when you get them uh, to make sure you know they're not the things causing um, a problem. But you know, once again, let's see. Let's see that should be on linear field. Couldn't it's having no effect at the moment. Box field is aha. I don't think I did apply both of these. Position, scale, so that's really strange. And I, I suspect some of this weirdness is because it's coming from Blender. Um, and like I said, the, the axis is just a little messed up here. You can see Y isn't up on these pieces. Um, it's Z, uh, which is, I believe that's how Blender is, but I'm not 100% certain of that. So I think that's kind of what's, what's causing some of um, this weirdness here. Uh, now, one thing, um, I think I, enabled invert here. So that can't be the problem. Um, that is the strangest thing. So why don't we just start over? All right, so that looks good. Just keeping the position, cool. Now let's just add our scale. I'll just create a new scale effector or plane effector that's working with scale. No reason to use that other one if it's giving me any issues. Okay, make sure I come in here and turn off position, scale, uniform scale, set it to negative one. 
Uh, and now what I can do actually is use that linear field, which may or may not be the problem, and just drag it into my list there in order to get it. So that looks pretty good. All right, can add the delay back in there. Awesome, so now we're starting to get that. So this is up here and we wanted it to disappear. Uh, so I'm gonna just take this field and switch its direction. So now we can see it's disappearing. We're still getting that weird issue on the first frame. I think the reason why we're not seeing it um, with the Jeep is because it's starting um, not visible. Uh, so I do think this is still just a problem with the axes of these objects being off and um, I probably would go through and fix this um, if I really wanted to. And notice the scale, it's kind of messed up here. I wonder if I could come in here and just freeze all the rotations and scales if that wouldn't fix this. So we'll see, maybe I just made everything significantly worse. Or that fixed it, awesome. So just freezing the transforms there, kind of put everything back to normal, made Cinema 4D like them a little bit better. I do think with this linear field though, we could also just make it just a touch narrower like we did the other one. Awesome. And then we can kind of mix these together by just turning both on at the same time. Now we may need to make the timing a little bit better. Uh, I think we actually want to slow down the helicopter just a touch. There we go. And so that is the end result. So looking not too bad. So that will do it for this video. Uh, let me know if you liked it. If there's anything else you wanna see, just let me know.